We are about 40 miles or so south of Candlestick Point at a place that first opened back in 2014. As you get a look at Levi's Stadium here in Santa Clara, California. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Levi's Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was deafening. They're set for football as the 49ers get ready to do battle. San Francisco coming back out here for this next drive, and the 49ers in, in week one taking the field for the first time since their loss in Super Bowl 54, wound up taking it on the chin, falling 24-20 to Arizona, and we all know the troubles that Northern California, really all of California, has had with wildfires this game was in danger cd uh, maybe having to be postponed but the smoky orange skies they dissipated enough to get the game in and the 49ers though they continue to have trouble with the cardinals now nine losses in their last 11 meetings yeah and you know that preparation for that game had to be interrupted at different times especially for san francisco there was talk about maybe moving the game to arizona and then flipping that game back later to san francisco but bottom line you just hit it Nine out of the last 11, Arizona has beaten San Francisco, but even more importantly, they really improved in the offseason. So San Francisco knows they have a true rival now, and they try to defend their division crown. And guess what? They go on the road the next two weeks. Both games in New York, the Jets and then the Giants in week three. But I like what the Niners do. They go cross country, they play, and instead of flying all the way back, they go to a, 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 a meeting place, and this time it's going to be in West Virginia at the Greenbrier. And if you haven't been to the Greenbrier, Brandon, you ought to go. What a great place for them to go. Right? They'll go and get their training in before they play week three against the Giants. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Yeah, Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Ball carrier. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On second down, Moster. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. The ball carrier. He was brought down at the 26. It's a gain of two. Brings up third and five. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. The L.A. defense up the snuff in coverage there. Pushes this to fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So Garoppolo off. Coming on is the veteran Robbie Gold for the 49er field goal. This a 43-yard attempt. And in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. Even though they didn't find the end zone, they have to be pretty pleased with how they moved the ball on the ground because we know that that was one of their big goals in this game. And that really goes through the entire offense because when you're running the ball effectively, just about everyone's involved. It's not just the guy carrying the football. It's everyone blocking for him, both inside and on the perimeter. this about five yards deep 
And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Time again to see this Los Angeles Rams offense. And the Rams, they open their incredible new $5 billion SoFi Stadium in week one against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night. Got the victory 2017, but gosh, the visuals of that $5 billion stadium, just spectacular with the lake and the waterfall, the translucent roof, the scoreboard. I think the streets coming into it are paved in gold. Uh, but here's the thing, the bottom line, Charles, the Rams ringing in the home opener with the victory in what was kind of a, a controversial game with that late penalty call. Yeah, that stadium is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, just being able to watch that was amazing. But when you talk about the Rams saying, OK, we've seen the stadium. We came here and scrimmaged and walked around. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 42. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. So after the INT, it's Garoppolo. And his throw here is incomplete. again from the 38 on second and 10. Working from the gun, Garoppolo completes it to the tight end, Kittle. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. George Kittle is easily one of the elite tight ends in the NFL. Back-to-back -back seasons of 88 and 85 catches. We just saw another one right there. Anytime he lines up on the field, you better treat him as a primary receiver and make sure you have a second guy in the vicinity to try and cover him. Garoppolo to throw on third and one. And able to haul it in is Kittle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Instead of a third and one run, they go pass and they get 12 yards out of it. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And he's heating up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. 16-yard line. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. On second and nine, Garoppolo. This will be caught at about the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. The Niners passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. Three yard line. They'll run with Mostert. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the 49ers add on to their lead. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball. But how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip makes the score Niners 10 Rams nothing Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown.
And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. They look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. DJ Jones coming right up the gut. Gets in there for a loss of nine. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. The 49ers have Richie James back deep. 47 yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. Caught by Sanu. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. To Mohamed Sanu. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five at the 30-yard line. Working with second and five now. Looking to throw. Garoppolo. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And they get it down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. But he mostered average 5.6 yards per carry last year. That was second in the NFL. So it's safe to say that it paid off that he patterned his work ethic after his hero, Frank Gore, the former 49er. That's a guy who really shows you how to go out and get it done each and every day. Raheem Mostert patterned him and had a breakout season in 2019 with the 49ers. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. Kendrick Bourne, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. A gain of 32 that time. Boy, they've definitely come out of the gate smoking here in the first quarter. Whatever they've tried to run has worked. And there's another example right there. Game plan is one thing, but how about his accuracy? It's been exceptional. Here's Mostert. And across the chalk, into the end zone, it's a 49er touchdown. Raheem Mostert 
with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Niners are able to stretch their lead. And a pair of rushing touchdowns now for him in the first quarter. And I'm liking what I'm seeing from his big guys up front because they're winning the leverage game. How many times have we talk about low man wins, right? Move the defensive front aside, create those gaps and holes. He's found his way through them for two touchdowns. And after both of those touchdowns, he went right up to that O-line and hit each of them on the helmet. That's he a, recognized That's a smart man. You know what else he should do? If this continues, take them all to dinner. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? The turnover, you just noted it punt's on the first better, drive. The punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn into first downs and hopefully points. They defer to Brown to start the drive. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Brown, the ball carrier. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. On second down, it's Brown. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Throwing on third. Gone. And the Niners get there and bring him down. And that's the rookie, Javon Kinlaw, who got in there to bring him down. From well, the short time this San Francisco organization has been configured the way that it is, you've seen their draft patterns. And when they traded to Forrest Buckner to Indianapolis, many people were wondering, what's going to happen to the interior of the defensive line? Well, they replaced him right away with Javon Kinlaw, the rookie out of South Carolina. And I expect him to make a big impact early as a rookie. Plays with great leverage. I love his hands and really good intensity each and every snap. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. They have to be pleased with the way that they moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now. The field goal probably feels like a disappointment. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at about the 32. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. He's got this to the rookie from ASU, Brandon Ayuk. A gain of six there on first. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver has really started to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. Garoppolo going to give to Mostert. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 11 yards there, first down. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, You've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. He was looking that time for Dante Pettis, but it'll be second down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. They hand it off to Mostert. 
and he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 17-0, our score after one. Rams, nothing. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. To throw is Garoppolo. And Kittle catching the slam. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Eight yards on the pickup. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Second and two. Here's Tevin Coleman, now in his second year with the Niners. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down at the 31. He's brought down at the 30. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet that thinks second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense, partner. Nice job, hold him to one after that eight-yard pickup on first down. Garoppolo gonna try and throw on third. A yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. First Garoppolo to his tight end, Kittle, for a Niner first down. On the handoff, this is Mostert. The UCLA product, Kenny Young, had the tackle. He's brought down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Throwing on second and eight. Garoppolo. Open man is born. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. First and goal at the 8-yard line. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Jalen Ramsey. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yes, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Second and goal from inside the five. They go back to the ground, this time Moster. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Another big play there by Aaron Donald, the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year in 2017 and 18. We know he can rush the passer. He's also dominant in the run game. The quickness for a man his size often defeats the offensive lineman trying to block him. Garoppolo now on third and goal. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Garoppolo finding Kendrick Bourne there. And the 49ers add six to their lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Well, the PAT would extend their lead, but there is a flag on the play. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And they will watch this one land in the end zone. That'll be a touchback. L.A. set to take over again on offense. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. 
I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. To throw again on second down. Golf and the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. DB for the 49ers now on third. Out of the gun. Golf. Man open. It's Cup. He's got it. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45 yard line. A Ram first down as Golf finds Cup. First down. Every time I see Cooper Cup play, I'm reminded of the first time I saw him in a summertime workout session. I remember running around screaming, who is this young man? And now we see him on the NFL level. Broke the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in 2019 yards. Career highs in all the major statistical categories. And not only that, that's off of a knee injury the previous season. This guy's tough as nails. That catch good for only a couple. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Number 34. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. Here we go, here we go, and I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Number 31, Raheem. The tackle there by John Johnson. He was brought watching that play John unfold Johnson. and watching him complete it one brought back days. memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. 11 yards there. First down. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. And somehow he's going to get a yard out of this as he fought through that first contact. It's second down. A gain of a yard. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. Here's Moster. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. 
But that was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? The Niners on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lava's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. A play fake from Mostert. Now Garoppolo. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Aaron Donald. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. I'm shaking my head and chuckling a little bit now, although it's not funny for anyone trying to block Aaron Donald. But you know all week long, they say to themselves, don't give up any sacks, and they just gave up one there. They double-team him. They triple-team him. They try and isolate and make sure that Aaron Donald can't get to their quarterback, and he always seems to find a way. He's not just a physical presence. He plays a game with a great football IQ. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. The heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. Garoppolo going to go on fourth down. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything, and against that man coverage, there was no space available in incompletion as a result. Second and ten. Throwing now is Garoppolo. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for the rookie, Brandon Ayuk. Third down here. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. Over the middle to Kittle, complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. That's caught by his running back, Raheem Mostert. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Not much there, only a yard. It's a gain of a yard. Brings up second and goal at the four-yard line. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Line of scrimmage, again, the four-yard line, second and goal. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo with his second touchdown pass of this first half. And the 49ers, they're just pouring it on. So much of the 49ers' success last season was due to tight end George 
Kittle, the NFL's all-pro tight end in 2019. If you want to start a debate, ask the question, is he the best tight end in the game, or is it Kansas City's Travis Kelsey? Maybe they're 1A and 1B. In any event, Kittle had 107 catches last season, his second straight 1,000-yard season, and he's a threat anywhere on the field, especially as you get closer to the goal line. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And they'll watch this one fall in the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And the Rams getting set to go now. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should sit on it here because of what you just said. They haven't made anything happen offensively. Getting ready to go into the half, give them a chance to take a deep breath, exhale a little bit, and start over. I don't know if this is the time to push it myself. Yeah, right now, under 100 yards of total offense. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Van Jefferson, the rookie wideout, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. All right, while we have a second here, Charles, let's look ahead to week two on the NFL slate. Some great games coming up. I'm just looking early here Sunday. you got Carolina, Tampa Bay. Wondering if Tampa can get the win there. Detroit and Green Bay both want to know that's intriguing and in division game and then you know Washington and Arizona you probably wouldn't highlight that one normally but one of those two teams CD or one of those teams excuse me is going to be 2 and 0. Yeah, that's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch. And how about the Sunday nighter? New England at Seattle. Cam Newton now leading the Patriots and Russell Wilson was so sharp in the opener at Atlanta. And then of course on Monday night, the opening of the Raiders new stadium with the Saints coming to town. I'm really excited about that one and you said it well with the Raiders if there was ever a stadium that looked like a Raiders stadium it's that one <laughs> it certainly does doesn't it and you know I don't want to steal anything from anyone else or any movies or whatever but the theme music you got to know is going to be dark and powerful just like the Raiders wanted to be the passing game not in sync here early and now it's fourth down Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. Call that a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going by. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Samson Abukum. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a rout as we send you cross-country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. On the return, it's Simba Webster. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. L.A. readies for its next possession. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. they got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained. 
maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big. You're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. Uh, CD, let's take a moment here and get your thoughts just on week one in general. Certainly no shortage of storylines, but I'm curious, after one week, which teams really caught your eye? Well, teams with continuity certainly did. Kansas City, the defending champions, they were sharp in their season opener, as was Baltimore, who, of course, has title aspirations, getting upset in the playoffs last year. How about a couple of big surprises? What about Washington coming back from a big deficit against Philadelphia at home? Getting a win for head coach Ron Rivera. What a big game for them. And, of course, Jacksonville. Everyone's talking about how this team has just been dismantled. They'll be lucky to win two games. They want a big win against Indianapolis. And, of course, all year long, we'll follow the New England Tampa Bay Ledger, won't we? In this case, New England, with all their changes, they get a win. Tampa Bay, with all their additions, they take a loss on the road at New Orleans. Yeah, you know that that coach in New England slept a little bit better than the quarterback down in Florida after week one. Well, you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. On first down, they go with Mostert again. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. He was certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Throwing on second and eight, Garoppolo. And this is going to be incomplete. Garoppolo's pass, incomplete on the throwaway. Brings up third down and eight yards to go. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. Here comes the 49ers punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And this works out well as it'll kick out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. And a short three-yard pickup gets him up to the 15. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second and seven, golf. That'll be caught by Cup. 
And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Cooper Cup had a big season in 2019. Also saw the emergence of tight end Tyler Higby for the Rams. He really jumped up his game about the last month of the season. But when it came time to ring the bell and get into the end zone, the Rams still look towards Cup. Ten touchdowns in 2019. Runs his routes with great precision and intelligence. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. There's a nice pickup right there, and after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. Goff fakes the give to Brown. He'll throw. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. It was Eric Armstead fighting his way through that time to record the sack. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Complete. Jefferson the target. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And this is third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is going to be 49er football. Jimmy Garoppolo second. A fumble on the play. Recovered by the Niners. Now Moster. He's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. Moster, the ball well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? On second down at four. Garoppolo, that is caught inside the five. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Now they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You should going to pick up a holding call. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Working from the gun, Garoppolo completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just not been up to the challenge in this game, and this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good, soft in spots. And there's an easy throw and catch for another first down. Mostert. And he'll take this one inside the 10, down to the 8. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. It's a pickup well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. The ball on the 8 still could get a first down technically, second and 7. Garoppolo. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. We got four. We got four. Throwing his Garoppolo on third down. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Michael Brockers drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. A 35-yard attempt. The kick by Gold is good. But now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. So they will accept the penalty and move forward.
So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Garoppolo finding Kendrick Bourne there as his guys continue to pour it on. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Rams, nothing. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. L.A. set to take over again on offense. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. I remember covering Robert Woods in college at USC. Consistent was the word that was always used about him. Maybe we should have added dependable as well. Over 1,100 yards each of the last two seasons. This guy studied to be an NFL wide receiver while in college and has carried that over to the NFL. A pro's pro. This guy plays as hard as anyone in the league. Brings up second and Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. And this is third down. These guys have punted four times already and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll get this one to cop complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 45-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. From the gun, here's Goff. Over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup. And he's got this down to the 35. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. It's a game of well, look what we have here, a sustained drive. And that was certainly a wall in the first half. They really struggled to try and move the football. But right now, they certainly seem to have the formula working. Let's see if they can keep it up. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Goff's throw here finds Woods and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. But when you think of the Rams in their passing game, sometimes Robert Woods gets overlooked. But if I told you he led the team in targets for the last two years and had 139 last year, would you be surprised? Probably. But now with Brandon Cooks gone from the roster, they'll look in his direction maybe even more and I just love the intensity that he plays the game with. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard and it's second down. At the 49ers, 22-yard line. 
They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Goff throwing again. Throw left side, complete to Cup. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. They'll run on third down with Brown. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. First and there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here's gone. This is caught. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Robert Woods from Jared Goff. And the Rams do gain a bit of respectability. I know what the scoreboard says here, but for all those who are playing fantasy football, their scoreboards are different. Points scored can benefit someone. So they get one score back, but still a long ways to go here in this third quarter. 38, Rams 7. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here's Richie James on the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Still well in control of this ball game despite giving up that touchdown a moment ago. going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 right at the 30. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 21 yards. And it's going to yield a new set of downs. That's the end of the tell you what, Barter, the way he's been slinging it in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. This is Mostert. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Again, they'll run it with Mostert. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Taken down right back to back stops, make it third and ten. It's third that time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. On third down, here comes Mostert. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Here comes the 49ers punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. 
And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. On first down, gone. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 10-yard line. Three yards the game there, second down. The 11-yard line. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. A shotgun snap for Goff. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. First down, Rams. On first and 10, Goff. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Pass rusher extraordinaire, D Ford that time, getting the sack. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Goff throwing complete to Cup. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Out of the gun, gone. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Ten more there and another first down. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. There's gone. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Again, golf. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 35. A good pickup, 17 yards, and also a Rams first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. It worked very well there for a first down. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. To the air again. Golf. A quick pass to Cup. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 19. 16 yards, a first down. And he's been one of their few bright spots here this afternoon. 
And as you pointed out, so far he's gotten his. That's not been the issue at all. But the teammates, the other guys, they've been shut down. That's why the defensive guys have to feel pretty good, even though he's over 100 yards. Yeah, he topped 100 with that last catch. And able to get this down inside the 15 to either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Up until the last five weeks of the 2019 season, if you had said, who is Tyler Higby? You might have got some blank stares back, but down the stretch, only Julio Jones and Michael Thomas had more targets in the final month of the 2019 season. A breakout year for Tyler Higby. He expects to continue those types of numbers and beyond going forward. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. First and goal at the six-yard line. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. And this is caught. He's got a touchdown, L.A. Malcolm Brown. Malcolm Brown there to make the grab. And the Rams are able to cut into this lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. And the lead is down to 24. Makes the score, Niners 38, Rams 14. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And we see James, he will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Once again, it's Mostert. Now this will go for five up to the 33. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. It's a gain of five. Brings up third and two. The Niners on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This time they face a third and two. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Good. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. 
Thank you. Solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Oh, oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. On second down, Moster. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. No, Brandon, that's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there, and now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. That's going to set them back five yards. Instead of a third and four, now they have to manage a third and nine after the delay of game. Throwing now is Garoppolo. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 13 yards there and a Niner first. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they got a little bit of a win there, but let's face it, the vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That one, a gain of 20 in a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they turn to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. On first and 10, it's Moster. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. The ball carrier, Michael Brockers, in on the stop. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. So the victory here for San Francisco, and to be frank, Charles, probably not too many people surprised at how this one turned out. Yeah, I don't think so at all. I mean, they're such a good football team. They were at home. You know, you walked in and you looked at the advantages and you saw that they had most of them. It'd take a lot to try and even it up. I just thought two words for this ball game: methodical and predictable, and both of them came together. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The 49ers get the win here at home as we say so long from Santa Clara.